Hi, this is Aaron at thinkpotlabs.com and welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we set up our switches and activate them to open up our exit door. Let's go ahead and delete all the switches in the scene. I have two. Let's go ahead and delete those. Alright, let's drag a switch out into the scene and set it up to become our switch prefab. So it has our sprite render on it for the switch. Let's add a box collider that the player will collide with, and let's add another box collider that will be the trigger. What we're wanting is we want the player to collide with the switch so they know it's there, and then we also want it to be a trigger so we can turn it on or off. And in our case, it's going to be turned on when they collide with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a script for the switch. Here's C sharp. Call it switch. Let's go ahead and open it up. And then we'll format it and remove the stuff out of the middle. So with our switch, we need to change the sprite on start um, to red to let the player know that it's disabled. And then we need to turn it green um, when the player interacts with it. So let's create two game objects, one for the switch on, and then one for the uh, switch off. We need to serialize both of these so we can get to them in the inspector. And then we also need a boolean, public bool, Um, is on. That way we can um, tell if the switch has been turned off or on. And by default it's going to be false. So in our start we're going to say game object dot get component sprite render dot sprite so the current sprite we're going to set it to switch off dot get component sprite render dot sprite and then on trigger enter collider So when the player triggers it, we're going to say that the game object get component sprite render sprite its current sprite is going to be equal to switch on dot get component sprite render dot sprite and then finally we need to show that it is on is equal to true. So again, it sets the switch to off sprite, and then when they run into it, set the switch to on sprite, and then we're going to um, set the is on to true when triggered. Alright, so let's go ahead and save that. Go back to Unity. Select our switch. And I'm going to drag the switch script on it. So now it's asking for a switch on and switch off game object. Let's create those. So let's go to our environment objects and grab a switch. And this one. The one I just clicked is switch one. This is the green one so let's name this to switch on. Let's grab the second one which is the red one. Drag it in here and rename it to switch off. <clears throat> in our prefabs let's create a new folder called objects. 
and then we'll drag the switch off and the switch on in there. Go ahead and delete both of these and then go back to our switch and we'll drag the switch off to the switch off and the switch on to the switch on and the switch script on the switch. So now that we have this all ready, let's just rename it to switch and drag it into our objects prefab. Reason that we did this is now we can delete this one and we can drag as many switches into the scene as we want and they're already all set up. They have their colliders, they have the, the script on it, and they have the switch on and switch off prefab. So let's drag a couple in here. I'll put one on top of this and then I'm going to grab another one and I'm going to put it on top of this one, this platform. Okay, so let's grab both those switches and I'm going to put them in my switches uh, game object container. Um, it's not necessary if you haven't set up this layout as long as they're in the player layer um, so the player can interact with them. Alright, so let's play the scene and um, when our player um, interacts with the switch it should change color. So when the scene first plays they are being turned to red. I'll show you that again. So by default this one's green. When we play it the switch is setting them to the switch off sprite. Okay, Hop up here and when he hits it it should turn green. Great. And let's look at the other one make sure that they didn't change green as well. Okay, so he's still red, so let's hop over there. Okay, so it's green, touch it. Or it's red, and then we touched it, and it's green. Perfect. All right, so now we got the switches set up to change when we collide with them. We need to create a game manager that will monitor the switches to see if they um, have in fact all been activated um, which should open up our exit door. So for that let's create a new empty game object and call it game manager and then let's create another script and call it game manager as well. It doesn't matter where the um, game manager object is in your scene. It's not going to render anywhere. We're just going to we're just going to put scripts on it. So let's grab the game manager script and put it on the game manager game object. And let's open up that game manager script. Okay, let's format this and delete the stuff in the middle. All right. So for the game manager, like I said, we want um, to be able to monitor all the switches and effectively the exit door too. Um, what we're doing is we're going to cycle through all of our switches to check their state for that boolean value to see if it's on or off and then if they're all if all the switches are uh, turned on then we're going to um, tell our door uh, to change states to the open state for us. So let's start working on that. So first we need to create an array of game objects. And we'll call this switches. And this will need to be serialized so we can um, place our game objects in there, but keep it private. And then game object exit door. I'll do the same with that, serialize it. Then we need to create a integer variable to track the number of switches in the scene. We'll create a um, GUI text field um, to display the number of switches in the scene. So we need to include, add another using statement, using unityengine.ui. So text switch count. This will need to be serialized. All right, so in our start, what do we need to do when it first wake, wakes up? Um, first thing we need to do is get the number of switches. So let's create a new 
create that function. So since we're asking for and we're going to have to return one too. So return number of switches. That'll be the last thing we do. So let's start off by creating a local int to track our switches and a for loop so we can loop through all of our switches uh, to get the count. The i is less than switches dot length. We're getting the length of the array. And as we loop through all the switches, we need to see if they are in the off state. And then as we loop through our switches um, to get the length, we need to check and see if they are activated or not. So when they first come on, they're not going to be activated. So we're going to be able to get the complete count um, of them. And we do that by if the switches i dot get component switch, we're checking that script, and we're getting the is on is equal to false, we're going to increment x. And then else if the switches dot get component switch is on is equal to true, we're going to say that the number of switches has been decreased. And so I'm doing it this way because we're only we're only going to need to check that after um, this is run. This is basically only, only going to check once. And then every time after that, we're going to check it this way. So outside of the for loop, we'll say number of switches is equal to x. And then here we'll return our number of switches. All right, now that we got our switch count um, for the active and inactive ones, we need to um, check on the state of the door. Um, so public void get exit door state. So here we're going to say if the number of switches is less than or equal to zero, then we'll tell the exit door dot get component door to open. Open the door. And then finally in our update, we need to have our switch count text. So switch count dot text equal to get number of switches to string. So we're getting this and we're just going to string it out. And then we're also going to uh, get the exit door state. So on every update, we'll report the number of switches um, in the GUI. And then we'll also check the exit, exit door state and open it uh, in the event that the number of switches is equal to or less than um, zero. Okay, so let's hop back in Unity. Let's go to the game manager. So the game manager is now asking us, the script is now asking us the switch size. So we have two switches in our scene. So let's lock this so we can grab both of them and just drag it on top of switches and I'll populate both of them. Go ahead and unlock that. Next it's asking for our exit door. So let's go to our doors. We have our exit door. Make sure on your exit door you have the door script on there and you have your animator on there with the door controller. So game manager, exit door. And the last thing we need to do is have a switch count uh, for our GUI. So let's go into our UI. Let's create another empty game object. 
and let's call this uh, switches and let's go ahead and in the health UI let's grab this background image let's copy that let's paste that in here that's gonna work out well all right so let's go to this oops let's focus on that let's bring it down about right there and now let's grab a text let's bring it up let's bring it over and this is just for demonstration this is not um, what I would consider you know final UI design this is just to get the um, idea out on the screen so let's change our font uh, to our earth orbiter let's make sure it's bold change our color to all the way black so it stands out. Let's center it. Let's put 10 in here just to make sure that we have a, a good number. Let's say best fit. That'll work. All right and let's add an icon on here. So I'm going to add a UI. Actually I'll copy this icon. Just so we look consistent and let's switch this icon to elements how about this one it's not doesn't really look like a switch but it'll serve the purpose for placement all right good enough so Let's go back. Let's focus on our scene. So now what we expect to see is when we start the scene, the both of the switches will turn red, means that they are um, deactivated. The GUI text will turn to the number two because it has counted both of the switches in the screen. As we um, interact or touch the switch, our count should go down and the um, sprite on the switch should turn green. By the time we activate both of our switches, the first one and the second one, our door should open. So let's test and check it out. Let's play scene. Oh, let's go back to our game object real quick, our game manager, and we need to grab the switch text. So let's rename the uh, text to um, switch count. Let's go back to our game manager and drag the switch count on there. Okay, let's go back to the game and try it once more. Alright, so we have two switches in the scene uh, per the count. Our switches are red and red. Our exit door is locked. So let's just play through the scene. So we interact with one, our switch count went down to one. And let's go to the last one. And when we and when we interact with this last one, our switch count should go to zero and this bottom door should open. So let's interact with it. Great. Our count is zero. We see the door is open. And we have finished the level. All right, that should just about wrap it up for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Till then.